ಗಂಗನಾಧಿಪತೇ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ತೆ so we're in the middle of this chapter in guru vachaka kovai called the reality of the world and by the way the next chapter is the unreality of the world so actually we're rooting for the reality here <laughs> but if you ask somebody well what is real what does real actually mean it's pretty clear they haven't looked into it and they take it as given that if i can perceive something with my senses or mind it's real and of course sadhu om points out <laughs> oh really you see that mirage over there in the desert of a lake huh is that real you can see it looks just like water but if you go over there there's nothing but sand so we're also perceiving so many illusions huh the senses in and of themselves are completely illusory what am i talking what are you talking about <laughs> well consider sight for example if i look at something close up it appears really big but then as it moves farther away it appears smaller and smaller but the actual size doesn't change see that's an optical illusion what we see and what actually is don't match up and of course we correct for it in the, in software huh in post production <laughs> Oh yeah, it's farther away. So, of course it's going to be smaller, you know, because every time we've seen something move farther away, it did appear smaller. Appeared smaller. So what we actually see are only appearances. And then we try to adjust what we actually see with some mental model that says, "No, actually the finger isn't changing in size. It's just an appearance but the appearance is what we actually perceive so which is real huh if we accept the definition that whatever i perceive is real then the finger is actually getting bigger and smaller but no we know that it's not getting bigger and smaller we know that this is an illusion so we don't consider it to be real so many things that we see that we perceive that we adjust because of our knowledge of the world our knowledge of physics or chemistry or whatever or social interactions <laughs> so remember the series we did called the truth about the truth about the truth truth is simply a definition it's a meaning that pops up in a certain context a certain space of meaning and its meaning is determined by its definition well the same is true of reality or real huh the previous verse says is the word real befitting to this world but what does real actually mean So I looked it up in the dictionary. <laughs> Oxford dictionary says real means actually existing as a thing or occurring in fact, not imagined or supposed. <laughs> But here we just saw how so many of our so-called real perceptions are actually imagined or as I said corrected in software, which is the same thing. Huh? the actual perception is that the finger gets bigger and smaller but then we imagine that oh no it actually doesn't get bigger and smaller huh? based on some other source of evidence is that real or not 
Who decides? Huh? What it says, an actual existence, actually existing as a thing. Uh-oh. <laughs> Here we go. So what do we mean by actually existing? Does it come down to the same criterion? We can perceive it with our senses? No, because we can also perceive illusions. You see, we can perceive myths. And with the mind, we can perceive all kinds of things that aren't true. So, where does that leave our definition of actually existing? Well, let's look at the next definition. The next definition is used to emphasize the significance or seriousness of the situation. I really want you to understand this. <laughs> It's real important <laughs> because our definition of what is real determines our whole values. How we judge things, whether or not we invest effort in something or whether we consider it to be important. Is it really important? See? And finally, let's uh, I'll look at another one. Of a thing, not imitation or artificial, genuine. So, for example, when we talk about the real self, we mean the self that is not artificial, the self that is not fabricated, the self that is always there, whether you create it or not, whether you believe in it or not. Huh? That was a definition of reality uh, by this one science fiction writer. Uh, he said, reality is whatever is still there after you stop believing in it. <laughs> it's not actually a very good definition of reality, is it? No, because we don't have to believe in a, in a uh, mirage, for example, in order to actually see it, to perceive it. Whether we believe in it or not, we still see what appears to be water, but actually it's non-existent. You see, it's really difficult, isn't it, to determine the meaning of reality? Well, just like the meaning of true or false, right or wrong, in or out or whatever, it depends on how we define it. It depends on the context and where we draw the line, the distinction between real and unreal, existing and non-existing. So finally, let's look at the definition of real used in philosophy. Relating to something as it is, not merely as it may be described or distinguished. Oh, so it says there is a reality that exists prior to our perception of it. That we may get it right or we may get it wrong, but the reality is still real and that's what's really real. Oh boy, now we got him. <laughs> this philosophy problem has dogged philosophers for hundreds, if not thousands of years. How do you prove that something is real? How do you prove that it exists a priori before you perceive it or before you recognize it? And the, the verdict after thousands of years of debate is that actually you can't prove it. You can't. Okay, how do I prove that this is one foot? Huh? I take a ruler and I measure and say, okay, this is one foot, this is 12 inches or whatever. Huh? I need some outside source of information to confirm or calibrate my measurement. So in the same way, when we go to prove anything, any kind of philosophical assertion. The way that we actually prove it, and this also goes for mathematical proofs, 
is that we have to bring in an alternate way of looking at it that also gives the same result. Isn't it? Well, how do I know that 2 plus 2 is 4? Well, I check on the calculator and I check in the math book and uh, I check on Google <laughs> and they all agree 2 plus 2 is 4 or 4 times 4 is 16 or whatever. So in the same way, if I want to prove that the world is real, here we go, I need something to measure it with, something to confirm its reality. And in the case of the world, there isn't any other thing. Because by definition, the world is everything that exists, everything that is real. <laughs> so you see, our whole language, our whole philosophy and everything, it rests on a base of circular definitions. <laughs> it's empty in the middle. There's no chocolate nougat filling. It's just <laughs> empty. So is it real? Or is it a product of our uh, descriptions? Or our distinguishments, our, our definitions, our boundaries, our edge cases? Hmm. Well, if, reality, if real is a problem, huh, then let's look into what is reality. Oxford says that reality is the state or quality of having existence or substance. <laughs> we got him again. <laughs> if something is temporary, if it comes and goes, does it really exist? <laughs> Uh, does it have its own independent, absolute existence? No. No. And there have been so many different theories, like Plato's idealism and Descartes' thisism and thatism and whatever, to try to explain this conundrum. But the point is, we can't prove that anything absolutely exists because all existence is relative and has to be measured by something else to be confirmed that it is an existence and not an illusion. So we got the scientists, huh? we got the dualists in their own trap. They say, in order to be real, it has to exist. And what, is, what does it mean to exist? Well, that it's real. And what does all that mean? That I can perceive it. But I perceive so many things that aren't real. Or that come and go unpredictably. Like love. Huh? Or like um, even the operations of the body. I don't know and I can't predict and I certainly can't control how my stomach digests food or how my lungs turn or extract oxygen from the air. I have no idea how that's happening. But so it's still going on. So it's real, right? Except it started at a certain point and it will end at a certain point. So is it really real? No. No. It's only relatively real. Or it's only empirically real. In other words, it can be sensed with the senses or their extensions, such as scientific instruments. So now, what do we mean by real? <laughs> when we say we want something to be absolutely real, aren't we saying that we want it to be as real as the whole world is real? And doesn't that actually take it out of the realm of being verifiable? Because there's nothing on the same scale to measure it with. So what is real exactly? <laughs> well, let's look at the next. The definition says, the state of things as they actually exist 
as opposed to an idealistic or notional idea of them. Oh boy, now this is another rabbit hole. Because do we have any idea of the actual state of things? No. All we know is what our senses tell us about them. And our senses filter everything. We can't see infrared or ultraviolet light, for example. But some other animals can. Well, the range of sounds that we can hear is limited. Huh? But elephants communicate by tapping the ground with their feet. And bats use ultrasound as a sonar. So are we really hearing everything that's there? Are we really seeing? No. No, the senses screen out a lot. And then our interpretation, our uh, mental figuring of our impressions as they come in through the senses also simplify, artificially simplifies our perception. We say, this is a picture. This is a statue. Uh -huh. This is a book. There's some more books there. And that conveniently packages and encapsulates the myriad of impressions that goes into our uh, perception of each object and it puts it under a convenient label, statue, picture, book. But actually, <laughs> the label is not the thing. So we have a notion of things. We can say, the books are on the shelf. Great. So we have words and we have logic, but does that make it all real? No. And we can easily, using reason and logic, come up with something impossible, huh? like the horns of a horse, that does not exist. A castle in the sky. Huh? We can invent such things, but are they real? No. So let's look at the final definition. And this is the one that we're, we're really concerned about. Existence, that is absolute, self-sufficient, or objective and not subject to human decisions or conventions. There's only one thing like that, and that is Brahman, the self. In all of the world's literature, culture, art, science, what have you, uh, Brahman is the only thing known or knowable that is actually existent, actually real. And so we cannot say that the world is real in the same sense that Brahman is real. Huh? Brahma Satyam, Jagat Mitya, that this whole world of multiplicity is illusion. Because, why? Brahman alone is real. This is the final verdict of the Vedas. And so this book this Guru Vachaka Kovai is walking us through the process of realizing this truth for ourselves. Aung Tatsat. Aung Harihi Aung.